I'm Dan Gray for MPGomatic.com, and this it's an electric Mitsubishi I. Now the I is admittedly a very different looking vehicle. Some folks are just not going to warm up to it, but I've dubbed this one the electric eggplant. It really is very normal to drive. Put the key in, and it's started. It's on. It hasn't started. It's on. Put the shifter into uh, drive or eco. We'll go with eco. We're good to go. Interesting whirring noise. Now I'm just using the microphones that are in the contour, my little contour cameras. And hopefully the sun glare is not too bad. I'm not going to go too quick. The speed limit here is 35, so I'll put it in drive and I'll stomp on it for you. And there's 35. It's fairly smooth. The drivetrain is really, really quiet. The word I keep coming back to is different. And uh, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull into our middle school here. And you can see what's different here in our town, which you may not see in yours. Take a look at that canopy. Pretty cool, huh? This is a rather large array. So it creates electricity, keeps the cars in the shade so they don't get too hot. And it looks like a little more than half the lot is covered. This is our upper middle school. We're going to go down the road. We're going to go to our lower middle school. And you'll see they're building a couple of, uh, a couple of other solar canopies. When you let off the accelerator, it immediately goes to start regen and it wants to get power back into the batteries. Like a hybrid car, except it's even more aggressive. And there are three settings. There's a regular drive, there's an eco, and a B. I'm not sure exactly what B stands for, but I'll go figure that out. But I do know that it really seems to drag it down. So this is the lower campus of our middle school. 5th and 6th graders go here, 7th and 8th graders go back in the other building. Handling wise, you know what, I've only put about 40 miles on this so far, and I really have no qualms about it. If we passed one over there, we'll go back and look at that, but take a look at this one down here. Not sure why that generator is running, but here's one under construction. So parking space is all underneath there, and that's uh, I believe it's the gymnasium and the cafeteria that's on the other side of that. But that will all be covered with solar cells. Here, take a look at this array. crawl underneath it. So, you know, 20 years from now, if this video is still around, people are going to look back at it and say, wow, that was all brand new back then. This guy looks completely different. It's solid. It's a solid. There's no gap between the cells. Maybe it's different technology. I don't know. I don't want to go through the mud over this way. Should we slalom through this? Now we're going to go to uh, go to a grammar school. You can see the array there. It's remarkable how aggressive it is. For parts of the country where you don't see much solar power, 
It's extraordinary. I think New Jersey might be number two in the country. One or, one or two. We're right up there with California, and we're a whole lot smaller than California is. That's for sure. And you're probably looking at this saying, wow, that's, you know, it's kind of nice. Look at all those trees and looks like country. That's not the, it's not the New Jersey that we see on TV. That's right. It's not. So here's our, our uh, one of our grammar schools. And this may have been the first one to get there, right? I'm not sure. The grammar school has a solar array on the roof in addition to the solar carport for a total of 679 kilowatts. These projects have cut our school district's cost for electricity from an average of roughly 15 cents per kilowatt hour down to 4 cents per kilowatt hour used. The high school has a huge array on the roof and two projects under construction. Clean energy generation is only half the battle. When it comes to this state, the bigger challenge right now is there's a huge lack of public charging infrastructure. If you go to New York City, there are lots of places to charge up by comparison. But out here in the burbs and the rural sections and, and smaller towns, just not happening. We're gonna go on a drive and we'll find our first station We'll find our second station, and we'll find our third station. But we're going to have to drive a little bit, and there's a surprise coming. One of the downsides to this little iCar is that the navigation system, when compared to other EVs, just isn't that sophisticated. It doesn't have a list of EV charging stations already loaded into it, like, say, the, uh, the Ford Focus EV does. So I know where there's a station. I'm going to go search for it on here, and then uh, we'll get off on our way. Please proceed to the indicated route. Okay, it looks like we've got 67 miles of range, plenty of battery. Let's go take a ride. This first segment is about 14.2 miles, and it's an easy run on two-lane blacktop through Hopewell and Hopewell Township. So our destination's not too far ahead, and hopefully, uh, there's no one sitting in a charging spot because that sometimes happens. People will park their non-plug-in cars in a plug-in spot. So we'll see what's waiting for us up ahead. This might be the perfect opportunity to do a zero to 60. Ready? I can't shoot the dash, but here we go. First time I floored it. There's 60. It takes a while. Race car, not. Three tenths of a mile ahead. Keep right. That uh, ate a couple of miles off the, off the charge. That was scary. So our destination is up ahead. And you'll see what it is in a moment. It's a lovely spot. And we have approximately 48 miles of charge left. Not too shabby. Where were we when we left? 67? I'll have to check the exact mileage when I get home. Yes, 
there's a buffoon in the spot. So that's a wrinkle. There's a person that doesn't really understand what electric vehicle charging station spots are all about. You know, they drive a Subaru so they might be environmentally conscious, but as far as reading, when they pulled into that spot, they must have been unconscious. Now we're off to see if we can find another charging station close by. There really aren't. Hey, look at this, a ladybug, cool. Keep your fingers crossed, this one works. Okay, so the gauge says we have 48 miles left, which is plenty of, uh, plenty of, of distance. The only rub is that we're gonna get on the interstate now, and you know what? That's probably gonna pull a bit more juice than, than us easy back road cruising is used, so. <laughs> All right, here comes the ramp. It says 35, we're hitting it at about 40. We want to carry as much speed onto the highway as we can as we're going downhill. The run from the element to the train station, about 12 miles, mostly all highway. Junction train station where I know there's a whole row of chargers. An entire row. Like I got half a dozen of them. Maybe we can charge up there. Okay, Princeton Junction train station. Here we go. Now I know the chargers are off to the right here. I've seen them. I've seen them pull into this lot it's a Sunday so there's nobody here you know usually this place is packed during the week it's completely full with everyone commuting into New York City here we go here's the row of chargers over here look at this one two three or doubles six chargers we're good huh I think we might be good second charging station second strikeout it doesn't matter that there are six charging stations here. These chargers, they're literally from the last century. Look at these chargers. Look at that. That's nothing like the unit that's on the little Mitsubishi or any modern electric car. Why are these things still here? I got one more chance to make it happen. So here we go. We got one more shot at it. If that one pans out, we're good. I'll stop and get some juice, maybe uh, grab a bite to eat. I've got 34 miles. Keep your fingers crossed on this one. We're gonna head into Princeton. There's a charge point charger there. It was open as of this morning. I don't know whether someone is charging there now or if possibly, uh, 
another person parked in front of it like they did at the element. Okay, we're in Princeton. That's Palmer Square behind us. And we are headed to the parking garage. I've got about 29 miles. Even if there's a knucklehead park in the spot or another electric car charging, I can still make it home. So I'm not too worried. I was, you know, admittedly a little, a little worried back there ways. I didn't know how far it was going to drop, but the range is what it says it is. As long as you're not cranking the air conditioning or turning the heat all the way up, driving like a madman. Let's stay there, honey. I just like driving to parking garages. It's my thing. Now we're gonna play Let's Find a Charger. Ah, there it is. So that's it. Third time's the charm when it comes to parking garages. I've got the little Mitsubishi hooked up. It's getting filled up with juice. I think maybe I'm gonna go find some lunch. So what did I think about the Mitsubishi electric car? Not for everyone. Not intended for long distance highway travel. If you're in the city, if you're in the burbs, you're in small towns, you're just driving the kids to and from school and to their sports activities, you've got a fairly short commute it could be pretty cool even more so if you've got a roof covered with solar cells imagine driving on your own juice electricity from the Sun into your car how cool is that <laughs>